Chapman has put a North Star up there and is telling us, you know, soon, whether it's three or five years, we're going to have a one-person unicorn, a one-person decacorn. As a result, we are already tracking, and this list is on the GitHub if you want to go and check it out. It's much longer than what I'm showing here. And this is a list of companies that have less than 50, five zero employees. They are less than five years old, and they have at least more than five million annual recurring revenue. And if you look at that list, except for Telegram, they're all companies that are offering some type of AI this and AI that, AI to edit code, AI for images, AI for text speech, and so on. And if you look at the list, we're talking about an average of 22 employees to build businesses like that so fast with an average recurring revenue per employee over 3 million. Pointing this as an example where you're spraying the Sam Altman Windex all over the place and you don't realize the nuances of implementing AI. And I'll give you a brief example. If you're using generative AI in your debt collection department, in your customer service, you should be using a generative AI and the advancements in AI to help you determine which of your clients prefer to talk to an AI chatbot because there are customers that do because they feel they're not wasting their time, they feel that they're more open, that they can say whatever they want, and which customers really want to talk to a human because it's a vulnerable moment. So don't use generative AI as, again, the Sam Altman uh, Windex because it re will really backfire and um, it won't be the right way. I'll give you a frame to start your journey while you are implementing use cases like you are in the customer service department, in the compliance department, in the product department. I want you to wear a different pair of glasses, a different pair of lenses, because that way you'll be able, while you're implementing the AI use cases that I heard before, and you acquire lots of learnings at different levels, you have to keep in mind where the actual sustainable and defendable value is. And this framework will help you do that. This is a framework that I have developed with my co-author, Hari Aburi, in a book that we published the last year called The Fast Future Blur, Discovering Transformative Interconnections Shaping Our Future. And our chapter was about thinking like an AI native. It was written more than two years ago, so it was very, had a lot of foresight. So let me outline this. Every business, a financial services business, you can think of the three main areas, the customer area, the actual enterprise with the employees, and then the broader ecosystem, which can include different people and partners. And then in terms of the capabilities of your business, we have identified five dimensions that are important within the context of implementing AI. The first one is all about the discovery dimension, whether it's at the customer, enterprise, or ecosystem level, you're developing, you're using AI for discovery, for search, for a contextual re retrieval. A lot of use cases are already in the market in that area. Then there's the area of design where you're using the advancements of AI to design or redesign some of your products, your services, and, and, and acquiring those capabilities. Then there is using the advancements in AI 
at the level of strategic decisioning, whether it is how to balance doing business as usual versus innovation or any other type of decision making. Then there's the dimension of dexterity where you're using AI to really look at your blind spots, to look at how you're going to adapt and redesign processes based on market conditions, and maybe even look at how to use AI to identify new opportunities, geographically or product-wise. And then in terms of the last dimension that we suggest is deduction, and deduction is all about using AI for smart decisioning, for narrowing decisioning. So what's important in this framework is to realize that the companies like OpenAI, they are providing you the picks and shovels, the modules. So let me give you some examples within the framework that I shared with you before from our industry. The Klarna example is really only touching the discovery level in the customer area. If we look at Bunk, uh, a neobank out of the Netherlands that's pretty pan-European, and they have been very early in working with NVIDIA and deploying generative AI. And not only have they deployed generative AI for fraud detection, which of course has to do with their capabilities in a, at the enterprise level and with their capabilities to adapt the dexterity level in market conditions, because as we know, fraud is very elusive and adaptive, but they've also were the first neobank in Europe to launch a smart chatbot called Finn. And Finn is smart, not only does the usual, gives natural language answers to transactional issues, but Finn is much more sophisticated. It can, you can ask Finn, which is your favorite restaurant? Finn can process images and save receipts and process them. So it's affecting not only the discovery and the design of the customer experience, it's also augmenting with personalization the customer. Capital One in the US, a really uh, a bank that has been very successful in the digital transformation, has really launched an amazing chatbot called Chat Concierge. Now, what is unique here is the fact that Capital One is focused on auto financing, credit um, buying a car. And what they've launched is a chatbot that helps end consumers to buy a car, but through the whole process. And that chatbot doesn't sit on the e-banking app of Capital One. It's offered at every car dealer that Capital One works with. So an end customer can go to the chatbot, compare cars, uh, compare credit financing options, book testing um, uh, drives, uh, get estimates of resale value. It's really at all these levels and the intelligence flows across customer and ecosystem partners at all these levels. This is a great example of how you unlock intelligence. Uh, if you continue to keep your silos, your business silos, the silo between marketing, the silo and business and product development, a silo between customer service and um, compliance or uh, new opportunities. If you keep those silos and you keep using and deploying the advancements in AI in that way, you'll never unlock intelligence. You'll never get a differentiating factor. So if there's one way of different thinking that I want you to walk away today after my talk is 
to, to really realize to your bone that an AI native business archetype is a new business transformation to support and become a participant in an intelligent economy. And the way you have to do this is to try to unlock intelligence with your customer areas, the enterprise areas, and the ecosystem levels. And essentially, use AI to hack the business complexity that exists in these complex areas.